Hello everyone. I welcome everyone back for another exciting session. We have here with us Mr. Samar Singla, founder and CEO at Jungleworks. Samar is the founder and CEO Click Labs, a profitable SaaS technology solution provider of business suit called Jungleworks in 2017. Samar is a serial entrepreneur and a physicist by education. He has previously worked as a researcher at IBM and CERN. Summer also founded Jugnu, the leading auto rickshaw aggregator and hyperlocal player of India. He is one of the industry's foremost speakers. He is an avid traveler and amateur phot photographer who likes to document the everyday world. Summer's personal website calls him someone somewhere in a garage, which clearly portrays his love and penchant for building new things. We are delighted to have him with us. Now I would like invite sir to take over this session. He will be speaking on bootstrapping in the age of hyperfunding. Over to you, sir. Thanks, Nihal, and thanks everybody. And I apologize for being uh, late, also, uh, but thanks for bearing with me. And uh, yeah, I'm super excited to be talking. And uh, and you know, I thought uh, maybe you know when everybody is super excited about all the funding everybody is getting. Uh, maybe you know it's a good time to talk about uh, you know bootstrapping. I know you know it's not really the in thing right now, but I think uh, you know as uh, Warren Buffett says, uh, do the opposite of market and you'll generally do well uh, on an average. So I thought you know it might be a good idea, and uh, yeah, I mean just to kind of you know give you an idea of what we do. I run two companies. Uh, one is called Jugnu, and one is called Jungle Works. Uh, they both started out doing something completely different from what they are doing today. So Jugnu started out as an auto rickshaw aggregator, and today it's it's actually I mean we still do the same basic thing, but the business model has completely changed to becoming a B two B mobility um, engine. Right, it's like a SaaS platform. You can run any mobility based uh, product on top of it. And similarly, JungleWorks started out as Click Labs, where we were actually building technology for. Uh, you know, like standard outsourcing work, and uh, it pivoted into a on-demand technology suit. So both these companies are fairly aligned and kind of you know SaaS solutions, one for mobility, one for on-demand commerce. So so that's kind of you know more or less about me. And you know, uh, by let me just kind of give you a brief of you know how I have structured this uh, this session so that you know and what is my aim from this. So essentially. You know, I see that a lot of people are very risk averse, right? And that is probably one of the reasons why they don't become entrepreneurs and why they, uh, you know, why they're afraid of entrepreneurship. In fact, uh, you know, you might might be surprised to know I'm a very, very risk averse person, right? I'm not a risk taker at all. And, uh, and you know, in my opinion, for risk averse people, bootstrapping is the way to go, right? And I've... So, you know, I want to go into why of bootstrapping, right? Why should you bootstrap? Why not raise funding, right? And then, uh, you know, how, if you've decided that you want to bootstrap, right? How should you do it? And finally, you know, like what are the pros and cons and what are some of the learnings I've had over the years? Because I, I consider myself a bootstrap uh, founder. I have raised some money uh, along the way. But essentially, you know, my most of my journey has been has been uh, uh, bootstrapped, right? So, so I call bootstrapping is entrepreneurship for risk averse uh, risk. It's the risk averse friendly way of entrepreneurship, right? Uh, when you when you look at uh, uh, you know raising funds, I think it becomes very very stressful, very very difficult. So, and you know, and I want to go into a little bit of that. So, so first of all, let's start with why bootstrapping. So, number one reason is, you know, it's higher success rate, right? So, let me let me define why why that is, and you know how that happens. If you think about it, right? So, there there's a very genuine saying that 99% startups fail, right? Which is true, but at the same time, you know, I think when we say that 99% startups fail we actually define a startup as a very specific idea, right? <clears throat> and then 
uh, you know, whether that idea fails or succeeds is how we define a startup to succeed and fail. But in real life, what happens is a startup idea may fail, but an entrepreneur does not fail, right? And that's that's what you know. This uh, this this uh, way of bootstrapping, where you actually are not really tied to the idea, right? You are actually trying a few things out, and just you know doing things along the way and figuring out what works. And you are okay to to kind of go to a point where something works, right? So so let me give you an idea, right? So in my case, uh, you know, by an example. So in my case, you know, I ran like four or five really stupid ideas so when i started my entrepreneurial journey and uh, they all failed of course because they were stupid uh, at least in that time uh, time frame so you know uh, how i continued was that so i first built a small cash flow business which was basically a consulting business right based upon that i was able to try a few ideas which were a little out there kind of ideas and even those ideas were failing right i as an entrepreneur was not failing i was able to keep going right so what you can think of it is that you know i created a hedge for myself by bootstrapping a company and then i was able to experiment things things out right so so the success rate is definitely higher in this because essentially you're not doing one thing you're doing multiple things you're you're basically building a cash flow and then experimenting it out rather than uh, you know when you when you start an idea where you think about funding you either get funding or not get funding right it becomes very zero one so in a way bootstrapping you are doing something like a vc right like a vc invests in multiple ideas and then something works something doesn't but as a whole vc can succeed even if 90% of their ideas fail which is generally how it is right so i think that's what bootstrapping is how do you think like a vc when you run a startup is essentially what i feel that bootstrapping is people can differ in you know thesis here and there but by and large is the same thing it's essentially you know um, you know comes from uh, pulling yourself up from your boots right so essentially you you pull your boots to pull yourself up it doesn't happen because it's essentially a perpetual motion machine if it were possible but that's kind of what bootstrapping is you're essentially building a building something out of nothing right and it works in startup world not in the physical world so then the number two reason why you should, should do it is you know it's much less stressful right because what i've seen is there's so many entrepreneurs who are always worried about you know whether they will be able to make it or not like you know whether their startup will be able to make it or not and i would like you know if i were in that boat i would be very very stressful like you know a zero one outcome is very difficult to handle emotionally and that is why a lot of entrepreneurs give up even sometimes when they are very near the success right and i feel that bootstrapping takes this out you don't have to be a zero one startup you are not either a successful company or an unsuccessful one you can be a less successful company always trying to be more successful one and that's i think you know that is the beautiful thing about bootstrapping which you don't have a choice in when you're working with vcs and raising you know large amount of funds again it's a you know it's a mindset really you know it's not necessary that you cannot run a hybrid of these models but i'm just trying to be like purely bootstrapped here for the purpose of this this chat and finally you know it will be very surprising to you but if you think about it the biggest outcomes right in the entrepreneurial world are actually from bootstrapped startups think about microsoft you think about google you think about uh, you know even facebook to to some degree they never really raised funds right even if they did raise some funding a little bit you know here and there but they are essentially what you would call a bootstrapped startup because they were from very very early on they were generating enough revenues to essentially you know uh, uh, basically keep going right they never really needed money to to grow and uh, and survive so from that perspective like amazon you know most of the large companies in the world today or let's say the richest people in the world actually have built bootstrap companies have not really taken a lot of vc money and you know gone for it i mean think about travis kalanick right he built like one of the largest uh, 
startups out there, Uber, but he's not really anywhere near in the top hundred rich people in the world because you know he probably owned. I think when he left uh, Uber, he owned like three to four percent of Uber, right? But you think about Jeff Bezos, he owned about twenty percent of Amazon when he when he kind of stepped down, right? So I think that's kind of the beauty of bootstrapping again. Your eventual outcome in terms of your personal success is much much bigger when you bootstrap. Yes, it's a it's a much longer journey. It's much longer, you know, you know, marathon versus. So think of it like a marathon versus sprint. So these are three reasons I would say you know why you should bootstrap. It's you know higher success rate. It's uh, less stressful. It's bigger eventual outcome for you personally. And now let's let's d- uh, dive into you know how should you bootstrap, right? And again, you know I, I'll I'll be very general and super crisp uh, so that you can then ask me questions if you have, because I think that's always more interesting. You know, lecture the words on the already I guess you guys. So so you know how right how to bootstrap. So first thing that you have to start is that the idea has to be bootstrap friendly. right you cannot really have like let's say i wanted to say uh, you know build an electric car i couldn't really bootstrap that company fairly easily right or i wanted to build a satellite company that's very difficult to bootstrap so but in both these ideas what you can do is you can actually try to make these spaces or make these spaces more bootstrap friendly by these three uh, pointers that i tell you right so number one solve a linear problem right not an exponential problem i'm guessing all of you are engineering students so you probably would understand what a linear or an exponential problem is but i'll still explain it in the financial terms so linear problem is you you solve a problem you get paid right away right typical exponential problem is you basically have a initial gestation period of negative returns every new customer is essentially you know bringing negative returns and then you know you reach a certain scale and you start you know growing so i'll give you an example of a linear you know linear problem would be infosys solves linear problems every new customer gives them money day one right and then there is exponential problems like uber right i mean they lose a lot of money for a lot of time and then they become profitable marginally speaking because it's a linear versus exponential problem right of course as you would have said you would have guessed linear problems are much difficult to scale exponential problems are much more fast or easy to scale but doesn't mean that you know there are different challenges in both right so so when you want to bootstrap go for linear problems not for exponential problems right number 2 another thing that you know i think i hear a lot in in uh, in the startup world is like don't really worry about uh, cash don't worry about uh, you know uh, profits in the beginning i think that's you know if you want to bootstrap you have to chase the cash right how do you chase the cash by being sales first let's say in our case you know if we if we think of a new idea we'll actually sell it first and then build it rather than trying to you know trying to just build something and then see how if it sticks or not so example would be you know we'll run a we'll run a small ad for a new idea or a concept and we'll go to people and say okay guys do you want it and if somebody wants it you know we'll we'll uh, build it and uh, we'll pass on the cost to them partially and uh, you know that's that's one way to of chasing the cash so to speak right so again it's a mindset right you can be a large company be profitable and still be thinking like a bootstrap company and that's what we do so you know but startups typically you know vcs would say don't really worry about cash don't focus on on money just focus on traction and you know kind of it works out that way also and uh, then finally you know uh, the third point you know how to kind of bootstrap is is that go after high margin problems right again this is a little bit tying into the first problem linear versus exponential But, but slightly different so so you know what are high margin problems high margin problems are a tough problems but and they pay pay a lot but not a lot of people have that problem so right so what happens is let's say you know you design a rocket engine it's a very tough problem i'm guessing you'll get paid a lot if you did that but 
you know, and you'll have very high margins. But you know, how many people would want rocket en engines designed? So if you want to bootstrap, you have to find these niche problems, which are high margin problems. And, you know, people will pay you a lot of that. So, so, you know, let me just kind of tie this into the first example that I gave you. So let's say you wanted to do a rocket company, right? You wanted to build a company like Starlink, right? Uh, which is Tesla's like, satellite internet startup, right? Or SpaceX's, I guess. So you wanted to start that company, right? How would you bootstrap it? So if I were there, I would choose not a problem statement, but a space, right? And the space is in this case, you know, satellites is my space. I would actually start consulting with pretty much any company out there, right? In this space, right? In this satellite space, let's say. And that's exactly what I did, right? I wanted to be in technology. I started consulting and that's, I think the most straightforward way to bootstrap, right? Uh, and that's, you know, I'll come to that in a minute. That's why VCs really hate it. And, uh, you know, but, but I think uh, there's no one way to build a large or a significant company. So, so, you know, what happens is you choose a space, don't pick a problem statement and start consulting in that space. You know, focus on these few factors, few pointers that I gave you. Solve linear problems, not exponential, chase the cash, do high margin sales, right? You do this, then slowly you'll build a cash flow. Then when you build a cash flow, then you need to innovate, right? And uh, that's when you can be thinking a little more like a VC. You stop thinking uh, like a, you know, survival driven entrepreneur but you start thinking like a vc that okay i have this cash flow let me invest this cash flow in innovation and that innovation will grow me right and uh, so so let me you know kind of uh, tie into a very important point and that is if this model is so successful i mean you know higher success rate less stressful bigger outcome why would anybody not do it right so why do vcs hate it you know and why do most people not bootstrap today or they don't want to, right? So let me touch upon that. So first question first, what are the flip sides? One, it takes a lot more time. So a sprint is, you know, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, you know, one minute. But marathon is like four hours, five hours. So same thing goes with this, right? If, uh, if you think about it, this is much more diff difficult in terms of time space, right? You, you, you have to think when you're bootstrapping, and you want to build a large company, right? You probably are going to go for maybe 10 year, 20 year horizon, right? And that's exactly the reason why VCs don't like it, right? VCs want to come in for typically a five year period. And when you're bootstrapping, five years are like nothing. Five years are like, you know, you build that cash flow and then you really start, uh, uh, you know, start kind of, uh, you know, uh, you start innovating really right so so for that reason and vcs by that time they want to get out right they, they don't want to they don't want to wait for 20 years for a company to get big but if you think about you know large companies alibaba microsoft amazon they've taken like 20 30 years to, to get to where they are and that's why they were you know in the large part of their life they were bootstrapped and and they were they were actually going on slowly and steadily so you know, VCs don't like it because it's too slow. And their model is that they take money from LPs and then they have to return that capital with some return in maybe five years, six years horizon, right? And I feel that, you know, really large companies are created in 10 years, 20 years, maybe even longer. So I think if you think on those horizons, you'll start realizing that, you know, there's no one uh, right way to do it. But if you bootstrap in the long term, it's actually the right way to uh, do business. And also, you know, like another clarification I want to do it is, uh, you know, give to you is bootstrapping is more a bent of mind, right? Rather than saying that you will never take capital, right? You get big, let's say, you know, you bootstrap for four years, you get decent sized, and then you raise funding. It's nothing wrong, right? I mean, bootstrapping does not mean that you don't raise money. But bootstrapping does mean that the kind of capital you will take eventually 
will be a bit more patient capital because you're trying to be you know to to be more innovation driven growth and then uh, you know not a, you know not a let's say money driven or a burn driven market share adoption based growth right so i think there there are these uh, fundamental differences so anyway like with that i i come to my final conclusion if you are actually trying to bootstrap right what is the real risk the real risk is not failure you know most bootstrapped entrepreneurs they don't fail but what they do is they actually settle they settle for much lower you know kind of uh, potential than than what they could have reached right so so i'll give you an example so you start a consulting company you know in satellites for example you know and you, the hope is the aim is that eventually you'll start making your own satellites launching them and do something right what might happen and happens in a lot of cases is that you'll start consulting it goes well and then you say okay you know i am doing well why do i go forward why do i swing for the fences right and that's really the the i would say the biggest tricky point with bootstrapping you have to learn that you will not settle if you really want to run a marathon there's a way and you know the biggest problem with marathon would be you can just go very slow and be the 50th person to finish it but how do you push yourself to not settle right not settle at you know at a comfortable position when you get in one and it's keep going and this is another reason why vcs hate it because vcs know that when you bootstrap a company you always have a choice to settle right but a non bootstrapped company rarely has a choice to settle they just have to do or die right and that's why they like to bet on those but i feel that you know if you have the tenacity if you have the clarity in mind that you will never settle and you'll always keep aiming for the fences at whatever position you are i think you know bootstrapping is best of both worlds so i think with that i'll wrap it up and you know if you have any questions feel free hope it helped the idea is that everybody is trying to figure out how to raise funding today i think you guys should figure out how to do or build big large businesses today right think of a 10 20 year journey because india is just starting to explode right these next 10 to 20 years are going to be indian time and you know if we if you guys build businesses at this moment and hang in there for like 20 years i think you can build like we all can build like massive massive businesses in india it's a it's just massive opportunity right now and don't you know be limited by vc money that just you know the stupidest kind of uh, you know limit we have all set for ourselves if i don't get vc money i can't do sub, you know startups i mean look at zero dha guys i mean i am a huge fan of those people they've not only built a super fast growing startup which is bootstrap but you know they prove that pretty much anything can be created you know by bootstrapping also so with that you know we are very small compared to them but we'll get there uh, so you know from that perspective i think my suggestion or you know thinking is go bootstrapped and hang in there for 20 years and build a large company hopefully it helped guys thanks so if you have any questions please feel free i'll i'll go to q and a i believe yeah so i sorry i think i have the questions now uh this uh, uh just a second and read whether i read out the questions or you'll answer them yourself so. i can just read out it's fine no worries okay so sure what can be the minimum capital or resources for bootstrapping and how much hours one has to put in initially and what kind of mental pressure one has to deal with um so let me explain so capital really zero yaar i mean I, i started with that's that's why it's called bootstrapping you know your time is everything that is and how many hours jitni shraddha hai right so i would say you know whatever you can put in do put in so when you're bootstrapping there is no time limit right and in fact when you're starting up there is no kind of clock that you clock in and clock out and uh, so i think essentially hours ki koi limit nahi hai and what's the mental pressure see in this like a lot of people say how do i deal with pressure i mean i'm not an expert i've had like you know 
crazy anxiety attacks panic attacks all those things so i i will not say that you know i'm i'm like an expert at handling pressure but i would say you have to learn how to deal with it right it's not how much pressure you have right essentially everybody has pressure right when you are in school there is exams when you are in college there is like other stuff when you are out of college you know ghar walon ka shaadi ka pressure there is always some pressure going on so you just have to learn with it right? learn how to deal with it you know how to live with pressure meditate and stuff like that bro you know take care of your health sleep well i think it should be fine but that's pretty much it so sorry i'm not an expert on that but i would say you have to learn how to deal with the deal with the pressure so yeah what are the pros and cons of using bootstrapping rather than other types of startup funding so you know as i mentioned you know higher success rate less stressful bigger eventual outcome that's what are the advantages disadvantages takes much more time and you know there's a there's a chance that you'll settle at a very small outcome you know when you get comfortable you'll settle so i think these are two bad kind of uh, uh, you know uh, bad points about the bootstrapping so hope you can make up your mind and uh, based upon that and then or ko deep mandal is asking is the risk of slow growth worth compromising for bootstrapping i am inviting or not diluting the stakes at an early early age, early stage so or ko deep to be honest yaar i also get a lot of uh, times you know i see these startups raising like you know 100 million 500 million all that stuff and sometimes i feel you know am i like missing out on something i mean there's there is definitely a lot of fomo in in my case also it's like i'm also just a human like everybody here so the answer is bro the point is you should think about it this way right every large company in the world right historically speaking has become big so if you think about it if you ask mark zuckerberg i mean and this is like documented stuff i have not made it up you know what were the biggest factors when facebook became what it was right first thing was news feed nobody had news feed you know facebook was the first one that came out with news feed two uh, tagging of photos friends right that like nobody had that no social network and you know facebook did that first and they killed it so if you think about it every startups journey would come down to these few of you know uh, points which are pretty large points but they are essentially you know um factors that that are more innovation related so if your long term success is dependent upon innovation you know does it really matter that if you are growing slow or fast so that's what i tell myself only time will tell you know if if i were if i am stupid or smart i am either smarter than others or i am stupider than others so you know i think maybe let's wait for about 10 years and maybe we can tell and then you know finally maybe it's not about smartness or stupidity maybe it's just different ways to reach the same goal so yeah i mean there's no right answer to it sadly but what i would say is let's wait for some time and see see how the indian ecosystem evolves eventually 10 years later are there more uh bootstrap reliance type of companies which have you know grown massive or are there more you know um, let's say zomato like companies which have raised a lot of money and burnt a lot of money and created i think maybe there's space for both but uh, yeah you choose your poison really so let me now go up so how does a bootstrapped startup compete with heavily funded ones so it's a good question man so there are two ways to do that one is you always keep innovating right so i'll i'll give you an example with jugnu we didn't really have like a lot of budgets and stuff and compared to ola and uber so we could we would always keep finding like the loopholes you know we would always keep finding the next innovation next innovation it forces you to become innovative right and second way is to always not compete head on right so so who says that you have to compete with a heavily funded startup when a heavily funded startup burns a lot of money think about it they're creating a huge market if you can actually you know like learn how to live with the shark or swim with the shark around them and find out these small niches you can actually keep growing along with them but stay out of their radar a simple example would be let's say you know 
uh, think of, you know, when Zomato started, a lot of companies actually started giving, you know, delivery services to businesses and, you know, small ancillary businesses like, you know, building these, uh, um, you know, so, so let's say Zomato started, Zomato started charging a lot of uh, commissions. A lot of companies came up and said, okay, you know, I'll, I'll give you lower commission and stuff. So, so there's always a space that opens up, which is big. And a very good example would be this company called, uh, uh, you know, Dine Out, right? They were like, I mean, they, they had some funding, but not really big amount of funding. How did they compete? By just staying out. They just kept focusing on booking of tables, which Zomato was not good at. And they just, you know, kept surviving along with Zomato. And people were getting more and more tech savvy and, and it's fine. So sometimes don't compete, just survive. They are, their burn is increasing the market size and that's what's going to help you in the long term. Uh, what are the, rec so Thoravi is asking, what are the recommendations of a strong marketing company to assist a bootstrapped SaaS startup? Uh, sorry, I don't understand. What are recommendations for like, you know, so are you asking from the point of view of a marketing company or what? I didn't understand. So can you, if you can please ask again, uh, I'll be able to understand. So then now Bablu is asking from the point of view of a student, we can't invest much at uh, early stage, how to bootstrap. So I guess that's pretty much what I talked about. Maybe, you know, if they have recording, just watch it again, but the idea is chase the cash, you know, solve a linear problem, go for higher margin sales. So I think that's kind of, you know, the gist of it, what I can say. Uh, then Abhyang Singh is asking, on one side where external funding seems like an easy source of scaling up, it also takes quite a considerable amount of stakes. How to weigh in the risks and profits while considering our options? So see, Abhyank, I think, you know, as it depends upon, it depends upon the idea. If your idea is something, you know, you just can't do without uh, funding and you are getting funding, for, sure, go for it. But what I would say is don't, don't think of that as a, as a starting point, right? I mean, if you make it a starting point that if I don't get funding, I will not start up. I think then there's a good chance of you giving up, right? So what I would say is don't be rigid, right? There's no need to decide that okay this is the approach i'll take and nothing else but saying okay let me start let me explore the market and see if i get funding right if you don't get funding don't stop keep bootstrapping so you know you can think of it like fake it till you make it but faking is like bootstrapping till you make it or till you get funding that's also okay there's no either or here but my idea is take the first steps start going and then eventually you'll be able to see when to when to kind of you know uh, when to raise money or or kind of take the next steps. So Dolly Bhasin is asking, how do you bootstrap if you are solving a large social problem? For example, bringing tech solution to solve sustainability in fashion industry. Mm, well, I mean, I think if you're solving to bring sustainability in fashion industry, I would do two things. One is it has to be e economically viable. I'm assuming that, you know, you are trying to solve a problem where somebody can make money out of it, right? If it is not making money, then I don't know if you can bootstrap or get VC funding for it, right? So, so I'm assuming it makes money. So given that, what I would do is I would find the largest five potential customers for your solution or something and then go sell them first before building it. So let's say you have a software that that helps, you know, a fashion manufacturer like Aditya Bidla or someone, right? I'll go to them and say, guys, okay, you know, I'll give my product to you for a much, much discounted price. Give me like a PO, give me like a commitment and, you know, I'll, I'll build it for you and stuff like that. And you'll be surprised, you know, these large companies, they might want to do everything. They cannot do everything. Right. Even at our scale, we have realized that, you know, entrepreneurs are much better at solving small problems. So, so, you know, they'll be very happy to give it to you. So I'll say sell first, build later, only if you can sell, if you can't sell, then the problem statement is probably not right. And don't be afraid of anybody stealing your idea that rarely happens. So I would say just, you know, 
bootstrap and solve your large problem but make sure it's a economically viable problem like you know if you're trying to do something that is economically unprofitable then you don't want to build a company then you want to build a ngo or something i mean and i have no clue about it i don't understand how they work and i am not in a point of my life where i can think about those things right so for now i can really say you have to make it economically viable if you want it to be scaled so swabhiman is asking why do vc funded startups fail more often than bootstrap startups is it because bootstrap startups uh, strongly focus on good business model so it's a good question uh, swabhiman and i think the reason why it fail why they fail is because vc model is such do or die either go big or fail but when you are bootstrapping the idea is to survive right and then keep getting bigger right the focus is on survival and getting bigger happens slowly but when you are vc funded vc say we don't want you to become a mediocre profitable company you either die or you become big so it's the definition of the vc model they don't want like small profitable companies in their in their portfolio they want big exits they don't care about you per se they care about their business which is go big or go home I, I mean, might sound ruthless, but that's what VCs are. I mean, talk to anybody. Like VCs are fairly ruthless people, and that's what their business model calls for. So I hope it answers. I don't want to offend any VCs if they're listening or otherwise, right? I mean, they're smart people, but I think they are mostly ruthless people because they just have to have to be ruthless. So yeah, they're not bad people per se. It's just that their model needs aggression. so is there any possible way to bootstrap your journey being a low profit startup in the early days uh yes or no let me let me explain low profit right it's okay if you don't have a lot of you know numbers coming in but it's not generally okay if you don't have margins right a lot of startups are like you know bootstrapping and just working on bare break evens right that's a very bad grind right you just keep grinding keep grinding but not moving forward So you have to make sure that when you are bootstrapping, you have to solve problems that are valuable enough for margins to be high. Because if your margins are not high, you cannot invest in innovation. If you can't invest in innovation, eventually you are not going to be big, right? So I think that's kind of you know what I would say. You have to have margins if you want to bootstrap, because you have to invest your own cash into bootstrapping. Hope that answers. So Bablu is asking again uh, uh, one more question. What is the hardest revenue milestone to achieve for a bootstrap SaaS startup? Uh, for me, it was actually having six months of uh, salary in the bank. Right, that was what I wanted. Like, it's not a revenue milestone per se. It's like a cash flow milestone. So my focus was there. Every first, every like month, I was focusing on how do I pay the next bill? How would I pay the next bills? And, you know, I was talking to a lot of B- VCs. They would typically laugh away at me. So, you know, at some point, I realized, you know, fuck it. It's better to, or is easier. Uh, excuse my language. Sorry. Uh, it's easier to sell to businesses than to VCs. And uh, I said I'll just get to six months of uh, runway in cash, and then you know I'm sort of invincible. I mean, you never are invincible, but it kind of gives you a good uh, mental. peace of mind so yeah for me it was 6 months of runway in my in my bank account so i didn't have to think about you know salaries and stuff uh yeah now abhyank is asking although bootstrap looks fundamentally better how far is the knowledge and industry traction of an investor matter apart from money invested as funding well it matters but abhyank i'll tell you one thing you know investors are not that bad you know you can reach out to a lot of people and they'll give you advice for free right and you don't necessarily need just investors for industry expertise right you can also hire very good consultants you can always go to like you know industry stalwarts and say okay i want this expertise you know they can either consult with you for some money or in my case i have reached out to like random people all over the world for all the problems i needed solved and they just help me out i mean you know like people are in general people are fairly good man so so you know if i were you i would just hustle it out be shameless ask a lot of people for help and people have helped in the past why would they stop helping i mean i you know if people ask me good questions 
I'll make sure that I answer those and I make sure that I help people. I don't care if, you know, I'm getting something out of it necessarily. So I think it's, it's fine. You know, you don't need to worry about that. This shouldn't be the reason why you get money from people. That's, that's my point. You can get like board members, you can get advisors, you can get a lot of other ways to, to solve this expertise problem, I would say. Uh, what do you do when a new competitor emerges with a more polished vers version of your start bootstrap startup? It's scary, man, but you have to be very, very paranoid. You have to be the best in the market. You have to innovate. Innovation is not easy, but I can tell you, man, no matter how much capital you have, it is not going to help you protect against innovation. You still have to innovate. That's the technology game, right? So a lot of people tell me, you know, your game is good. Yeah, your business is good. You don't have to invest anything. You can build a build a large company. I say, not necessarily. We don't need that much capital in building stuff. But if we won't innovate fast, you know, there's so much copycats. There are like probably 20 copycats of our company. So I think uh, you have to make sure you are innovating. So people will come. Competitors will come. You know, if you are the most innovative person or startup, you'll win. So I think that's what you should do, man. Be the best person in the best startup in the in the market in terms of innovation, not in terms of how much money you have in the bank. Okay, not as an NGO. Uh, so Dolly is asking again, not as an NGO, but as a social entrepreneur who wants to solve a $2.5 trillion fashion economy. There's a lot of tech innovation to solve some key issues like reducing waste at value chain and supply, blah, blah, blah. So what I would say is, see Dolly, I think you're onto something. $2.5 trillion is too big a problem statement, right? But you need to break it down. You know, what I would say is, when you have a $2.5 trillion problem statement, it's almost always a bad problem statement because it's not one problem statement. It's a lot of problem statements. I would say break it down, break it down, break it down, narrow it down to a very, very specific thing, which you can take to people and say, this is the problem I'm saving. I'm going to save you $100 a day, $1,000 a day, $10,000 a day, not $2.5 trillion a day or a year or whatever, right? So my point is you need to break this thing down so much that it becomes manageable into a bite-sized information that, you know, you come to a person and, you know, for example, so you, you mentioned prediction and management inventory, et cetera. Again, innovation towards circular economy. I have no clue what it means. Is it sellable? Make it sellable by, you know, saying you have this problem, you are wasting 5% or 10% of your clothes or whatever you buy or whatever it is. And this is how it will solve, you know, the problem. Go to 10 fashion houses who are manufacturers or whoever, sell your solution before you build it. It is doable. It is very, very doable. I've done it multiple times. In fact, almost always, that's what we do. We sell first and build later. If the problem statement is genuine, if your solution or your thesis is genuine, people will be there who will fund you. So you should be able to actually fund your business or bootstrap your business by selling to your businesses, to your potential customers before you raise any money. I hope it helps. I think... Uh... Yeah, sir. So now we uh, we are running short of time, so we do uh, wrap it here itself. Thank you much, so much, sir, for such a great session. I think everyone present here found it inspiring and informative. Also, thanks for answering all the questions. I feel uh, that solve for uh, as we have to wrap it by eight. Kindly of good for uh, if you have a message to our audience. Well, my message is, guys, keep at it. It's the time to build in India. And, you know, if you build, if you innovate, India is going to reward you like anything. I think if you are graduating today, it's probably the best time to graduate in this country. Because I think 10 years or 20 years down the line, I mean, if you look at the macro of this country right now, like, you know, China has kind of self-destructed in, in some ways. You know, US is losing its dominance. The whole world is looking at India for leadership, guys. And trust me, this this is just not. Uh, it's like once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm I'm a very big skeptical you know person when it comes to. I've been very vocal critic of Indian policies and stuff in the past, but I think the macro is right now. 
just go and build stuff and you know it's it's going to be a good time to to build stuff in india so Thank now you, i want yes sir sorry go ahead so now i want to express my heartfelt gratitude on behalf of entrepreneurship cell iit kharagpur and all those present here today to our honorable speaker mr samar singla for being a part of ead jamshedpur 2021 i hope he enjoyed interacting with our young student community i would also like to thank each and everyone from the audience for spending their priceless time here with us at ead jamshedpur i'd also like to express my gratitude to all our sponsors and especially my entire team without whom this event would not have been possible i hope all had a great time and i wish we will provide you guys with such great events ahead we will be having ead bhopal on 9th of november that is tuesday hope you will also join us there now i would like to tell the audience about empress arrow the annual business model competition organized by entrepreneurship cell iit kharagpur Empresario provides a platform for students to get excellent professional mentorship from our experienced and disciplined mentor pool and to showcase their ideas in front of venture capitalists, angel investors, and industry leaders to get a chance to win prizes worth 50 lakh rupees. Okay, thank you guys. So, so Fear of failures has always been a challenge to many who wish to take up entrepreneurship. But one must remember, entrepreneurship is about being able to face e failures, manage failures, and succeed after failing. With this, we end the session of EAD Jamshedpur. We sure you would have found it helpful. Thank you, guys. Excuse me, what will you do with your first salary? So I would like to present my first paycheck to my father. I'll buy a laptop for my younger brother. I will save some money and with the rest I'll get an AC for my dad's room. I'm going to start a life insurance policy. I think it's very important for my family's security. have an idea for a startup or an established project? Are you confused about how to gain guidance, international and national media coverage and opportunities with your startup? Empresario is the one place solution to all your problems. Fill your Empresario questionnaire today and most importantly mention your unique idea. Then meet your mentors who help you in brushing and improvising your idea. Now your idea is ready to bring a change, not in just you but for everyone. Submit your business model for final submission. The best innovative idea packs wins the grand trophy, along with prices worth rupees 5 million. Direct entry to semi-finals of BMCG 2022. Mentorship opportunities from industry's experts and professionals. Chance to pitch in front of leading investors. Idea validation platform to validate your idea. Immense media presence. Networking and incubation opportunities. Workshops. Startup services and content-rich feedback from world-class entrepreneurs. Hurry up! Registration deadline is 20th November. Register at www.sli at KGPO or Gempresario. This is your dream comes true.